Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. If this is your first time visiting the channel, we're excited to have you. I'm Justin with ExcelSmith. If you've been here before, welcome back. In this video, we're building an equation that randomly chooses child values and their corresponding information for a list of parent values. We'll be using this equation to randomly generate an answer key for a trivia game. A more practical and professional application would be to use this equation to draw a random sample from a hierarchical data structure. But we'll save the practical stuff for later. Today, we're having some fun. Let's get started. Our data set in columns A through E contains a list of six families from The Simpsons. The last name or parent value is in column A. Columns B through E contain a specific member of that family, along with some fun facts including their voice actor and debut episode information. Our goal is to first create a list of the unique last names in column H. We will then randomly select a specific character for each of the last names and provide their details in columns I through L. With our plan outlined, let's build an equation that creates a list of unique last names. In cell H2, start by typing an equal sign, followed by the function name unique, and then in open parentheses. The unique function is available in Excel 365 or Excel 2021. If you're using a version of Excel prior to one of these, you can accomplish the same thing by using the Remove Duplicates option located in the data ribbon. After our opening parentheses, we need to provide the range of values we want the function to evaluate. For this example, we want a list of unique last names, so we'll select the range A2 through A13. This is the only argument we need, so we're good typing a closing parentheses and pressing enter. The unique function has created a dynamic array consisting of unique last names. The order of the names in column H matches that of column A. However, I'd like the names to be sorted alphabetically. This step is optional and won't impact the rest of the equation. All we need to do to sort the list of unique names is wrap our unique equation inside the sort function. Sort is also only available in Excel 365 or Excel 2021. Like the unique function, you can accomplish the same results manually by using the sort option in the data ribbon. Start by selecting cell H2, then place your cursor immediately after the equal sign and before the unique function name. Next, type the function name sort and then in open parentheses. The first parameter of sort is the array we want sorted. In our example, that's the dynamic array created by the unique function. Since we want our list of last names sorted in ascending order, we don't need to provide any additional arguments to the sort function. Go ahead and place your cursor at the end of the equation, type a closing parentheses to complete the sort function, and then press enter. That's better, the unique list of last names is now sorted alphabetically in ascending order. We can now move on to creating an equation that randomly selects an individual from each of the families. In this equation, we will be using index and match to identify our specific individuals. We then incorporate ran between to randomize this selection. Start by selecting cell I2. Next, type an equal sign, index, and then an open parentheses. The first parameter of index is the array that contains the value we want returned. We're starting with first name, so we'll select the range B2 through B13. Make sure to lock the cell reference by pressing F4 on a PC or Command and T on a Mac so the range doesn't update as we drag down our equation. After selecting the range, type a comma to go to the next parameter. This parameter tells index which row to return from the range provided in the first parameter. For example, if we entered two, we would get marge as marge is the value in the second row in the range B2 through B13. However, we don't want to hard code a value like two. Instead, we need our equation to return the row from column A that corresponds to the last name in column H. To accomplish this, we can use the match function since match returns a location based on a provided value. Go ahead and type match followed by an open parentheses. The first parameter of match is the value we want to find. In our example, this is the last name in column H, so we'll select the cell H2. Type a comma to move to the next parameter. The second parameter is the range that we want to search for the value provided in the first parameter. This is the list of last names in column A, so we'll select the range A2 through A13. Again, we need to lock the range reference by pressing F4 on a PC or Command and T on a Mac. Enter a comma to go to the last parameter. This parameter tells match how precise it should be when searching for our lookup value. For our equation, we want match to only return values with an exact match, so we'll select option zero. That's it for the match function, so we can enter a closing parentheses. Before incorporating the randomness, let's type a second closing parentheses to complete the index function, and then press enter to see the results so far. Perfect, our equation returns Maud, who is the first individual with a last name of Flanders. Let's drag down the equation to cover all of the names in column H. 
Like with Maud Flanders, the equation returns the first names of the first people listed for the given last names. The next step is to modify our equation so that it randomly selects a character with a given last name. We can use the randBetween function to randomly offset the result of the match function. Start by selecting cell I2 and then placing the cursor between the two closing parentheses at the end of the equation. Next, type a plus sign. Then, type the function name randBetween and an open parentheses. RANBETWEEN returns a number between and including the value set in the two parameters. Since we have two characters per last name, we want to randomly add a 0 or a 1 to the match results. The 0 would return the first character tied to a given last name. This is the same functionality as we saw previously. Adding a 1 would select the second character for a given last name. This means we need to enter a 0 as the first parameter, followed by a comma, and then the number 1. Lastly, type a closing parenthesis to complete the RANBETWEEN function. Press enter and then drag down the equation. We now have a randomly generated list of first names in column I for each last name listed in column H. Press F9 on both Mac and PC to refresh the list. If you're getting value from this video, let us know by pressing those like and subscribe buttons. It's greatly appreciated and really helps out the channel. The last piece needed to create the trivia answer sheet is to bring in the values for the voice actor, debut episode, and original air date. To accomplish this, we'll use the XLOOKUP equation. For an introduction to XLOOKUP, click the YouTube card in the top right corner or the link in the description below. Like Unique and Sort, XLOOKUP is available in Excel 365 and 2021. It's also available in Excel 2019. If you're using a version of Excel prior to these versions, you could accomplish the same outcome by using the index and match functions. Start by selecting cell J2. Next, type an equal sign, the function name XLOOKUP, and then an open parentheses. For the lookup value, we will be passing in two values, the last name and then the first name. When using multiple values in xlookup, we separate them with an ampersand. To complete the first parameter, select cell H2. Make sure to lock the column reference by pressing F4 on a PC or Command and T on a Mac three times. Next, type an ampersand. Lastly, select cell I2, again locking the column reference. At this point, the order of the values in the first parameter doesn't matter. In other words, we could have selected I2 first and then H2. However, the order does matter when it comes to the second parameter. XLOOKUP needs the order of the lookup arrays in the second parameter to match the order of the values in the first parameter. To see this, type a comma to go to the second parameter. Since the first lookup value is a last name, we need the first portion of the second parameter to be the column in our dataset containing last names, which is column A. After selecting column A, press F4 on a PC or Command and T on a Mac to lock the reference. Next, type an ampersand followed by selecting the first name column in the dataset, which is column B. Again, press F4 on a PC or Command and T on a Mac to lock the range reference. Type a comma to go to the third parameter of XLOOKUP. This parameter tells XLOOKUP which column to return data from for any matches set in the first two parameters. For column J, we want to return the name of the voice actor. This means we need to select column C. Press F4 on a PC or Command and T on a Mac twice to lock just the row reference. We don't want to lock the column reference because we want the columns to update as we drag the formula to the right. Lastly, type a closing parentheses and then press enter. Press F9 a few times to make sure the first name and voice actor refresh and are showing the correct information. After confirming the XLOOKUP equation is working, drag it down to cover the rest of the last names. Finally, drag it to the right to cover all of the columns. The last thing we need to do is to change the formatting in column L to match the date formatting in column E. The easiest way to do this is to first select one of the cells containing a date in column E. Then, press the Copy Format button on the left side of the home ribbon. Lastly, drag over the values in column L to apply the formatting. The equation we built works great when each parent option has the same number of child options. In this example, each parent option, which is last name, has exactly two child options, which are the first names. What if we have a different number of child options for each of the parent options, like this? Here we have a varying number of characters for each last name. For example, we have five characters with a last name of Simpson, four with Flanders, and so on. As is, our equation can't handle this variability. Fortunately, we can correct this by using the COUNTIF function. Before modifying the equation, we need to clean up our existing equations to handle this new dataset. Start by selecting cell H2, then placing your cursor anywhere inside the formula bar. With the formula active, drag down the selection in column A to cover all of the last names, and then press enter. 
Next, select cell I2 and again click anywhere in the formula bar to activate the equation. Drag down the selections for both column A and column B, and then press enter. With the range updated, drag down the equation to cover all of the last names in column H. You might get a reference error in cell I4. This is because the current equation returns one of two first names, but we only have one first name in our dataset associated with the last name Krestovsky. Don't worry about this for now, we'll take care of it shortly. Lastly, select cell J2 and then select the formula bar. Update the selections for columns A, B, and C, and then press enter. Drag down the equation to cover all of the values in our answer key. Again, you might get a reference error in cell J4, but we'll take care of this soon. After dragging down the equation in column J, drag it to the right to cover the remaining columns. Again, ignore any reference errors you might get in row 4. With those updates out of the way, we can modify the equation in cell I2. The RAN between portion of the equation is hard-coded to return either 0 or 1. The upper limit, 1, is the number of first names minus 1. In other words, if your initial dataset had 4 child values for every parent value, your RAN between function would be between 0 and 3. We need to modify the upper bound of the RAN between function to make the equation flexible enough to handle a different number of child values for each parent value. Ultimately, for every last name, we want to tell RAN between to pick a number between 0 and the corresponding number of first name values less 1. For example, for a last name of Simpson, we would want a random number between 0 and 4. For the Wiggums, we would want a number between 0 and 2. We can accomplish this by replacing the second parameter of the RAN between function with a count if function. Start by selecting cell I2 and then deleting the 1 in the second parameter of RAN between. In its place, type count if followed by an open parenthesis. The first parameter of count if is the range that contains the value we want counted. For this equation, we will be counting last names so we can select the values in column A. Make sure to lock this reference by pressing F4 on a PC or Command and T on a Mac. Next, type a comma to go to the second parameter. This parameter is the value we want counted in the first parameter. We're counting last names so select cell H2. Type a closing parenthesis to complete the count if function. As is, the count if function will return the number of last names found in column A. This is close, but remember we need one less than the number of last names. This means we simply need to subtract one from our count if function. That's it. All that's left is to press enter, drag down the equation, and update the formatting in column L. Press F9 a few times to see the answer key update with random values. Now you're all set for your next Simpsons Trivia Night. In this video, we built an equation to randomly select child elements from a list of parent values. Continue the randomization ride by watching this video to learn how to randomly place values into groups. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.